Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of the Mystery Vault Podcast. I'm your host RJ McCready and for this episode I thought I'd pick a big hitter in the mystery and unexplained world and that is Roswell. The Roswell crash incident, was it an alien craft, was it a top secret experiment or was it a weather balloon? Well that's what I'm here to talk about today and I've got a few facts I've looked into it. There's an awful lot of stuff on this. There's a lot of stuff. There's you know there's a lot of books, there's a lot of videos, documentaries, uh, there's other podcast shows about this. Um, there's actually people who have spent you know decades of their lives investigating this case looking for answers and they still still can't get to a a conclusion here not like a final conclusion i think because it can go off in so many different avenues um and this is the general thing i think this is the thing with mysteries and the unexplained because you've had that seed put into your head you always got that that wonder even if the government came out and said and let's use the Roswell case here, even they come out and said, look, we've got watertight evidence here, we've got a file here to say that was definitely a weather balloon that crashed on that site in 1947, and it's all there. I think we, we're we still going to say, yeah, but could it have been an alien crash and you're still covering it up? And this kind of goes with everything, you know, even Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, all that sort of stuff, we're still... There's a possibility that it's probably not, you know, when you look into the facts and the evidence, but there's still that sort of certain percentage of, uh, we like to believe. And I'm going to say that a lot on the show because I think that in the mystery and unexplained world, we just love a little bit of hocus pocus, guys. Do you know what I mean? We just like to think that even if it was just a weather balloon, we like to think, ah, you know, it would be fun if it was an alien spacecraft and it would be cool if the army did retrieve it and they found out that there are aliens from other worlds and I think that that is a general draw with this case we love a little bit of fantasy and all that sort of stuff but still to say um, we like to know the truth as well and there's always going to be that thing of you know, is the government telling us the truth so there's lots of different avenues with this case which kind of makes it a little bit of fun as well at the same time you know trying to you know investigate and seek the truth you know like fox Mulder says you know i want to believe and all that sort of stuff so um but let's have a look at this case then guys so july 4th 1947 man did that cause <laughs> did that cause us some mystery in the world hey from there onwards so something crashed so I would say, yeah, okay, that's probably a fact that something did crash in Roswell. So you've got a couple of options here. One is being a weather balloon, one is being a top secret experiment, and the other is an alien um, craft. So likelihood is a weather balloon. I'd say that's probably very plausible. Top secret military experiment, I'm kind of thinking that's in the amber area. Because that is plausible when you look at what was going on in 1947. I'll get into that in a minute. Alien spacecraft. I'm not going to rule that out either. Because I will tell you now guys. I think there is possibly alien life on other planets. Um, I wouldn't rule that out. But did that happen at this time? Um, Well if you look at. Before we get into the actual Roswell crash and who found it and all that sort of stuff, if you look at 1947 at the time, so it's just after World War II, America is getting itself back together again. You've got the Cold War that's starting between you know America and the Soviet Union, so there's a little bit of tension there. You've got um, the space race which is starting here. You've got Chuck Yeager who is doing all the right stuff with all this, all the um, test flights and trying to get into space and all that sort of stuff. Also in Roswell, New Mexico, you had the Trinity project which was the atomic bomb. And you also had the 509th uh, military base in Roswell as well who were the... um, United States Air Force um, was a specialist team that um, carried the nuclear bomb and these were the only guys in the world which which could operate that. So there's a lot of exciting stuff going on in Roswell. 
atomic bombs, military um, aircraft. Then, you, like I say, you've got the tensions between um, America and you know the Soviet Union. So, with the space race, which was also a competition between the Soviet Union and the United States, not to forget, and the Cold War, and the fact that America or the whole world has just come out from World War Two, and not to forget that you know when you look into this, let's just say this now: America basically got invaded by the Japanese, you know, by surprise. America is now in a position thinking, well, the Russians are having a go as well now, possibly. They're probably thinking, well, do we want to let the world know all of our secrets? So if we've got some technology which is going to give us the upper hand, we want to keep that to ourselves. And why not? So I can, I can so, sort of get the fact that the US uh, military and the government probably want to keep these secrets. So it, it might get looked upon as if they are keeping it all hush-hush and we don't want to tell anybody. But I kind of get that because you don't want this stuff to get released to like the potential enemy. So I'm kind of sort of building this sort of case up to sort of see it from the sort of government perspective. And I think that's quite an important part of the case is to actually put yourself in the government position and try and get their aspect of it so if you did have some technology that you didn't want anybody to know about and it just happened to crash and someone found it you probably just want to cover up not not because you don't want to tell the public the truth it's just that you just don't want the wrong people to get hold of this um, technology so I can kind of see that aspect of it so that's that kind of clears that up so that just brings it up to that platform and as I said earlier, there's a lot of information that has now been released, and there's a there's a bit of information that I, I researched online, which was very important, and it was only um, it was only a small thing, but it felt quite significant to the case, and it was actually one of the um, United States Air Force um, personnel who released a document saying that in in the 1940s or at this time, anything that was Flying in the sky had to be documented, documented and monitored. So it was, it was protocol that if you was going to fly, you had to keep it monitored, and that was a very strict protocol. So when you think about it, and this this will be important to what I get into later on, but this is, I'm going to say this now: um, personnel had to monitor as a protocol. And just say if the United States Air Force did have a top secret aircraft, I'm pretty sure they're going to monitor it and they're going to keep an eye on it. And they're going to be of massive interest of it to make sure that it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. So, and if that top secret craft did crash, I'm pretty sure they'd have to go out and recover it. Okay, so let's, let's stop that part there and then let's go back to... July 4th, 1947, and you've got a rancher called Mac Brazil, and that night he has witnessed a very violent thunderstorm and he sees an explosion. So the next day on July 5th he goes out to investigate, and he comes across a cluster of debris which is about 30 miles north of uh, the Roswell town itself. And he takes a look at the debris and at first he's, he's unsure of what it is. He said it's, it's objects which he didn't recognise, there were silver markings on it. So he goes home and he comes back uh, the next day with his son and he recovers some of the parts. And he puts some of them into a box and he brings them home and he shows his family. And there's talk in the town on the lead up to this of people saying that they're seeing flying discs in the sky it seems to be a bit of a phenomenal thing that's going on so Mac Brazil he's, he's putting two and two together he's thinking well what I found here all this debris could it possibly be one of these flying discs that people were seeing you know so he gets a local sheriff a call uh, Sheriff Wilcox and uh Sheriff Wilcox has a look at the debris himself and then he gives um, the United States Air Force uh, Army Base called the 509th 
and they send out Major Marcel uh, with um, a Lieutenant Colonel and a Major Sergeant to visit the site. And now bearing in mind you have a Major, you've got a Lieutenant Colonel and a Master Sergeant. These are high up ranking officers and even they couldn't at this time identify what was on the site. There was no mention of a weather balloon at this time, they just found some debris which they couldn't work out or identify. So let's just stop that now and go back to what I said earlier. So if the Air Force and these, you know, like I say, these are, these are high up ranking officers here. You think they would have known if what this was, if it was one of their secret experiments or a weather balloon because that's the other thing with the weather balloons these are being released twice a week I don't think they were a secret as such to the public because the public knew about it so there's a good chance that the rancher could have identified that as well but like I say you got three um, officials from the army here who stood there and if it was a weather balloon I'm pretty sure they would have looked at it and said um, thank you Mr Brazil that is a weather balloon and we're going to deal with this now but it's not there's a little bit of uh, there's a bit of a pause and a bit of hesitation a bit of a sort of scratch your head to say well we, we don't really know what this is um, and then for the army to then release a press statement to say hey we found a flying disc and, and that is fact you know this is this happened you know the, this these these events happened um, which is ultimately what makes this case interesting is that there was right at the start of this instant um, a press release to say we found a flying disc not a weather balloon or anything like that and you think like you say I, I can't keep going back to that I think this is a vital bit of evidence to say you know you've got three army official guys here saying we don't know what it is and we think we found a flying disc and they've released a press statement saying that right at the beginning of this case and the other thing is um You've kind of got four days between the actual crash and the army finding out about it, which is from the rancher, so they didn't know about it. So basically, they didn't know about this, the army, at this time. We don't know what this is. So then um, Jesse Marcel, he, he recovers some of the debris and he takes it over to Fort Worth and he tells General Ramey about this incident. So then with a matter of literally hours General Ramey says no this is a weather balloon that's it boom and as I said it, it's just crazy to think that Marcel couldn't identify this as a weather balloon but then when he speaks to General Ramey General Ramey's gone no it's a weather balloon and let's quickly change the the statement in the press and then let's very quickly get Marcel into a room holding up the bits of debris of a weather balloon to say this is what it really is but I'm pretty sure my Marcel would have known what a weather balloon is being a major in the Air Force and why did he not say that in the first place and why was all the confusion at the start so this is kind of what makes this case interesting I think it's these little things and it's kind of like the golden hour moment of collecting all this this evidence and then going to see a another army official is going guys what are you doing this is kind of what it looks like to me these guys are basically telling the truth saying releasing all this to the press saying we found something we don't know what it is and then someone else coming along saying guys what the hell are you doing we, we can't release this to the um, you know to the public um, this is all top secret so this is what makes this case so interesting and what brings all the hocus pocus and the mystery into it and I can see why people have investigated this over the 70 years and keep asking questions today just because of these vital things that happened in the first four days but this, the question still remains well, what was it so at, at this time this case got wrapped up um I don't think people bought into the fact that it was a, a balloon. I'm sure there was speculation in the town in Roswell and witnessed, and you know things got a little bit hushed up and all that sort of stuff, which 
which we find out later on, you know, from um, witness testimonies and cases and all that sort of stuff. But let's have a look at that weather balloon. So, there are weather balloons, the public knew about that at that time. But later on, I think in the 90s, I think it was about 1994, the government released a statement or a file saying that it was a weather balloon. And the reason why we can, why it was so top secret is because it was like a um, an extra advanced weather balloon um, with a uh, like a satellite disc on it, which was to detect um, whether the Soviet Union were um, launching atomic bombs or doing tests or anything like that. And that's why we can say what it was. And what was different about this balloon? was that it had metal on it which was top secret it kind of looked different from the rest it had different patterns angles all that sort of stuff on it so i guess in a way you know looking at it from the government perspective and for even major marcel this could have been so top secret that even he didn't know about it which could be the reason why these government officials turned up and looked at it and thought well we don't want to say it looks like a weather balloon but it doesn't because we don't recognize this material so we don't know what it is so we don't want to say that but it's still a little bit sketchy um it's almost as if the government you could say are trying to sort of put a plast a laster plast over an elaster plast just to cover something up and i can see why the public and the guys who have investigated this case might just still say that sounds like a pretty lousy excuse to me. But, after having a look at that, you know, say it was, it was called Project Mogul, this, this experiment. And it still doesn't answer the question again to what I go back to earlier on in the case, is that you had that four day period where the United States Air Force did not know anything about this crash. And the fact that the Army or well, the army personnel has come out and said we wouldn't we wouldn't send something up into the sky unless we're monitoring it now he said monitor it so how come this wasn't monitored if it was that top secret and it was a special experiment surely if it did crash they'd know about it and then they'd try and recover it so it goes back to that question um so okay they've come out and said yeah it was this project but how come you guys didn't recover it so there's that aspect so again it just it, it, it turns it on its side again and then next to the craft weather balloon top secret experiment whatever it is <laughs> you then also had the, um, the bodies that were recovered from this site as well there was talks of alien bodies that were found on, on this site and um I guess we, I've had a look into this as well. When you look at the um, early test flight suits, um, they do look very strange going back in the 1940s. Some of the very advanced stuff, they're like green. Um, it's almost like they've got some sort of webbing over the hands. The masks have got lenses on, almost like they've got sort of like fly heads and oxygen masks. So I'd imagine in 1947, you could look at that time, didn't have any social media or anything like that and i suppose if if someone like a rancher turned up and saw this stuff you'd be thinking man this looks like it's from another world so i, I can sort of see that aspect of it but again it, it it brings it back to that question was it a test flight or could it have been aliens so we're back into that territory where we, you know where do we get a definitive answer for this but there's a there's a way i can look at it it's like you could possibly do an experiment i guess with this because i it's a bit like, I guess you could say, like Chinese whispers, isn't it? I suppose if you did an experiment where if, if you put a load of debris and a load of dummies into a field and you've just got someone to turn up and have a look at it for a quick five minutes and have a glance at it and go, come away and say, what did you see? And then go and tell somebody else and then go and tell ten other people. Time you got round from telling all those 10 people and you go to the 10th person and you say what what was it that that person saw this you're probably going to find it's going to be something more elaborate and a little bit more sort of exciting to what it actually is now i'm not i'm not trying to sort of 
debunk this whole thing. I'm just all in this show. It's always going to be about the realms of pos- possibilities and what ifs. But I think that experiment could possibly work because we all know it. We've all heard of Chinese whispers when someone tells you something, someone else goes on, and it just kind of gets flowered up over the time. That could be a possibility. And when you look at this time, with where you don't have any social media or anything like that. Um, if you say if the rancher in this case did see um, an aircraft which was top secret, is an elaborate and it contained a couple of pilots in there with all this equipment on that which looked advanced with helmets on, could could they actually look like alien bodies? You know, it's just it's a possibility, and it kind of brings it back to, for me where I'm kind of like drawn to the fact that I think. I think this is more plausible that it was something top secret as, a, as an aircraft um, which the um, United States Air Force were testing out but then I, I suppose I could slightly sort of contradict myself you know admit that because even in this review I go back to say but then you still had that four days of the United States Air Force not looking for this so you know it, it, you think you get to a conclusion then you're back to square one again and you're just looking to all the avenues and I suppose you can see how this is this case has gone on for 70 years with people trying to get answers and you get you probably get a bit of evidence and you're back to square one again and you go back and say okay you've released this you've told me this but how about that so you're not really getting a definitive answer, but I suppose what I'm trying to say here, guys, is there's things that I could possibly understand from that time with everything else that was going on, like, say, with the Cold War, um, atomic bombs, the space race and all that sort of stuff. And then this is the... This was the other thing I was going to bring up here is like, okay, so what if, okay, the government have this crash and then all of a sudden they are testing our aircraft and advanced technology. And what's to say the government have gone, hey, all of a sudden the public are sort of bought into the fact that there's aliens and UFOs and all these discs they're seeing up in the sky are aliens, spacecraft from another world. They're mistaking our top secret craft for aliens. Hang on a second. This is pretty good for us because we can now test all our craft and if we kind of get caught out by the public they might just think it's an alien spacecraft from another world and See what I'm saying here, guys. The government could be saying, actually, we we, we should uh, we should work on this. This is this is a pretty good cover up. So it's almost like a cover up over a cover up. So the air force could go out, fly all their top secret craft, and if they get caught out by the public, the public would just think it's alien spacecraft. So the government would be thinking, yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. With that, why don't we run with it? So that's a, just another theory of mine: is that the government just let this roll, let the public believe it was aliens whilst they were testing all their secret craft. So it's that's that's another sort of conclusion that I come to with this. But going back to what I said at the beginning of the show, I think one of the facts here is that something really did crash. Something that important that the military felt like they needed to have an armed guard with it which is, seems quite extensive for a, a, a weather balloon and I said it was one of three things weather balloon, top secret aircraft or alien craft One, actually the one thing that seems worth eliminating is the balloon at this time because it that feels like it is just the thing that the military have just chucked in to say, yeah, that that's what we're going to use to cover this up. So it kind of leaves us with the two options, which I think the one that's very plausible is it is a top secret government experiment that's crashed and they want to cover up. And that's kind of the one that I'm going with. And then, of course, you've got the alien spacecraft, which is 
I guess there's a part of me sort of, and I'm even going to say on the romantic part of it, and the thing where you sort of say, well, that would be pretty cool. Um, even if that was first contact with the you know, with the Air Force, and they have found this technology, possibly unlikely, but I I I think it's always going to be a case where we're not going to be able to rule that out on this. I think there's always going to be that sort of. Ooh, Possibly, you know, there's that sort of what if, and I think that's what's going to sort of drive this forward for people to always try and get the answers. And I don't think we're really going to get an answer. Um, who knows, you know, whether there'll be a release, whether one day we'll find out from the government and they'll come out and say, hey, yeah, they're really all aliens. I don't know. Can't even rule that one out either. But what I can say is that Roswell, as a town has this lasting legacy and I don't think they've done too bad out of it. I mean because they you know it's got a tourist population, it's got a I think it's got like a an, an alien McDonald's, it's got a museum. I've never been to Roswell. It's on my bucket list. I'd like to go there one day and I think that's just the fun of it and why not, you know? Why can't we just have a little bit of that sort of romantic notion to think that hell, you know, maybe a a, a flying saucer did crash there and is retrieved by the air force but i'll just leave you with this i just think that the government probably know more than they're letting off and maybe one day we will find out so there you go guys that is my review on roswell there's a lot more i could go into but i'm i'm not going to because it's um it's a very extensive case um there's a little bit more detail there's witness interviews and that but this is this is kind of like a bit of a roundup of what i think and hopefully you've enjoyed that little roundup might just giving you a little bit of food for thought and stuff like that so there you go i hope you enjoyed the show guys like i say it's the first episode of many it, that's the general makeup of my show i'll just um sort of pour a few facts out and tell a little bit of the story and give you tell you what i think and stuff like that so um I will be back for another episode soon. I'm going to jump straight in for... I'm going to talk about the Loch Ness Monster. Because, again, I'm just I'm just starting the show, building up on some very famous cases. And then as we go along, I'm going to dig into some cases which you might not know about. We're going to start off with the big hitters first. The, the ones which I think have started off all this mystery and fun and excitement and all that sort of stuff. So, um, But before I leave, guys, um, a little bit of... Um, a little bit of admin for the show. I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, so please go and check out all the other shows on there, including my other show, which is Bite Size Cinema, where I talk about movies, which is uh, it's a lot of fun. I have regular guests on board, and we bring out all trivia and fun things like that. And um, more importantly, you can find um, this show on iTunes, Spotify. I think it's going to be on YouTube and several other players on the internet. If you put in... Um, the Mystery Vault podcast. It should take you to a place where you can listen to the show. I've also got a Facebook page, um, so it's all new, it's all up and running now. So um, please go and check that out. Put some comments on there and even just let me know if there's anything you want me to cover, anything mysterious or unexplained. Um, so there you go, guys. I say I'll be back soon for a bit of Loch Ness. Um, keep it spooky, keep it safe. And. Let's see if we can try and find the truth. <laughs> see you soon. this show then make sure you check out the other great shows on the legion podcast network like cinema psyops cinema beef devour the podcast duncan and Bo come correct exploding heads horror movie podcast friday the 13th get slayed the hell Ming power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero go show kill the cast underwater kaiju from outer space jerry hates action legion after dark metal health obsessive cinema discourse Pick Six Movies, the podcast by The Cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, 
Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.